Now, the history books say that the first artificial object launched into space by the human race was the Sputnik satellite. Sputnik was launched by the Soviets on the 4th of October 1957. But according to a magazine called Air and Space, published by the Smithsonian Institution, Sputnik was second. The first object put into space by the human race was an American manhole cover. And it was all part of a nuclear experiment. Since 1957, about 5,000 satellites have been launched into space. There are different types of satellites. Weather, communications, military, scientific and so on. The working life of your average satellite is usually 10 years or less. So most satellites will orbit the Earth for hundreds or thousands of years as space junk. The satellites in low Earth orbits get slowed down by the atmosphere and burn up as they fall to Earth. Ultimately, these satellites do die with dignity as the atmosphere cremates them on re-entry. But before artificial satellites, way back in the mid-1950s, the world was atom crazy. The nuclear nations were boasting about their newfound strength by letting off a nuke every week. This was the wholesome 1950s way that people had fun before colour television. They exploded nukes above ground for everyone to see. Soon the scientists realised that there was a fine layer of radioactive rubbish being carried by the winds around the Earth. Radioactive debris is not your ideal serving suggestion, so the Americans decided to cover up and let the nukes off underground. Bob Brownlee, an astrophysicist, was put in charge of the nuclear experiment. Project Thunderwell, as it was later called, was a really good name. Brownlee had to work out how to restrain the tremendous power of an underground nuclear explosion. Being responsible for a nuclear explosion is like playing with fire. And there is one word that you never want to hear someone say, and that's... Oops. His team drilled a hole about 160 metres deep. Then they carefully lowered a small nuclear device to the bottom. It was equivalent to only a few tonnes of TNT. The team sealed the hole with a manhole cover. It was about 10 centimetres thick and weighed a few hundred kilograms. They started the high-speed cameras and lit the wick on the nuke. The high-speed cameras caught the manhole cover as it began its, until now, secret flight into history. Now, you don't need an atom bomb to launch a manhole cover into space. You don't even need a rocket. According to the laws of physics, if you have a strong enough throwing arm, you could hurl it. All you have to do is chuck it at the escape velocity of planet Earth, about 7 kilometres per second. That's ignoring wind resistance. If you throw it at less than 7 kilometres per second, it will eventually come back down again. If you can throw it a bit faster than 7 kilometres per second, it will go into a low Earth orbit. If you can throw it at about 11 kilometres per second, it will go into a huge orbit around the Earth, much bigger than the orbit of the Moon. And if you can break the 11 km per second barrier, about 40,000 km per hour, it will escape the Earth's gravitational field forever. According to Brownlee's estimate, the manhole cover took off about six times faster, about 66 km per second. That speed would take you from New York to Los Angeles in about one minute, almost as fast as the speed of Hollywood gossip. Not only was that manhole cover moving fast enough to leave the Earth forever, it also escaped the gravitational pull of the Sun. That manhole cover went past Pluto many years ago and is our first interstellar ambassador, even if it is slightly radioactive. Now, a word of caution before you start trying to throw rocks, sticks or younger siblings into space. Top tennis players have served balls at over 200 km per hour, about 200 times too slow to get into orbit. But with 200 tennis players and one ginormous racket? Who knows, the unbeatable ace into space? We can only hope that our neighbours would be kind enough to return the ball.